Hello everyone, good afternoon. This is Juan Catamayo, JCT for Education for you. Today is a very special day. We have an incredible guest with tons of experience in the field of writing. But before we go with our guest and we talk about creating and writing a super duper essay, I wanna take one minute to say thank you and congratulations and happy anniversary to our dear friend of mine. JCT for Education is based on team, on family, on trust, and collective work. Nothing that you have seen wouldn't be possible almost nine years ago without the help and assistance of a dear friend of mine, my brother, mi hermano, mi amigo, my doc, our IT guy, our HR guy, a human being that is extraordinary. Today is his anniversary at JCT for Education, eight years, and we couldn't be here without his support and help. He's the friend, he's the person, the most loving and caring person, and he always supports and smiles the students, to the students and the parents. He's patient and he's driven and he's a strategic when he moves forward. So from the bottom of my heart, and I see our colleagues that are watching right now, Christian Safi, we love you, my friend, and happy, happy anniversary, anniversary, eight years already. And I can't wait to see what else is in the store and for many, many more years. So my friend, my brother, my doc, we love you. And thank you so much for these years of service and love to education. Now let's go to the Carolinas and let's invite our friend, Susan Dunlop. Ta, 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 ta. Vámonos, career evaluations, done, college list, done, and today, how to write an effective college essay. Susan Dunlop, how are you? Hello, Wonka, how are you? Good, how are you today? Can I also say congratulations to Christian? Please, go ahead. He was your student, so go for it. He was my student my very first year teaching in El Salvador, and he helped me learn the culture and the country and would tell me when I had done something wrong and would guide me back <laughs> to the straight path. He was, he was a friend. He was tremendous and a very yeah. good student too. Worked very hard. He, he worked very hard. Uh, he yeah. went to Lynn University thanks to his aunt and uh, an aunt that I met at Clark University many, many, many years ago. He came to visit from El Salvador with his parents and you train him really well, Susan. <laughs> He's an excellent writer. Uh, he he's very analytical with all the writing. So you did well with that AP English class in El Salvador. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm proud. Very proud of him. And uh, Christian is saying here, you also taught me so much. Christian, can you write something that that you will never forget about Susan while we are doing this conversation? And he says, I miss you. Aww. So go ahead, Susan. Oh, I miss him too. We had we had a lot of fun. That was. Um, Teaching there was a lot of fun. Um, I really, th those students were very special. Good. So we have Pipe Diaz Granado. He just joined in. Uh, he's a rising senior. He's actually, uh, I'm so glad Pipe you show up because we're going to write something. We're going to talk something that you will need it. Uh, how to write an effective college essay. So, son, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Where, where are you from? I am from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Okay. And geography, help us with geography. How far from where? Well, we are in the foothills of the mountains, about okay. about four hours from the beach. Okay, perfect. About four hours from Myrtle Beach, very popular beach. Yes, and how is, how is everything with COVID down there, uh, social distancing? I see that you are at, at an office right now. I am. Um, I work for a company that does construction, and we have not stopped. But okay. uh, we wear masks when we're working. And if I can close my office door, then I don't have to wear a mask. But um, South Carolina, not so good. We're not, we're not following the rules very well. Yeah, that's happening right here in South Florida. I just learned from one of my colleagues for 4th, 4th of July, a lot, of, a lot of the gathering areas here in South Florida, they will be closed. They won't be allowing like, you know, our tradition. And it's really sad, but I guess it's not going well down here, my friend. Yeah, no, I, so, I, I understand. So let's bring Christian for a second. He says that 
uh, our lunches at the courtyard next to the <laughs> benches by your classroom at a uh, Escuela Americana. Yeah. Our long chats that went everywhere from books to life, amazing times. So that's good. Did you did you work at Escuela Americana when Leo Diaz was there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he is his personality is very large. Yes, I, I remember. I I know him for years. Uh he's in Mexico right now at Green Gates. I don't know if you keep in touch with Leo or not. It has been a long time, but we got to travel to Colombia together. Okay. And it was a little dangerous. So it was very nice to have Leo because he's like, you know, a bodyguard. <laughs> yes. And, and um, let me ask you a question. Uh, did you go to a public or high school yourself, uh, private high school? Private school, 12 oh, years. 12 years. Um, but my mother was the principal in the okay. lower school. So I went for free. So okay. I was the poor kid in the rich school. Okay. Well, but uh, you, you got your education and you created a college list or what was your, because you went to University of South Carolina in Colombia and you got your BA in English and BS in computer science. So did you create a college list or pretty much that was your choice? I applied early and I got a full scholarship oh, okay. in October and okay. it was, it was actually a little bit more. So it paid for my books and my gas and housing and food and everything. And my parents said, that's it. <laughs> You're going there. So I did. And, and, and then you went, uh, you went to El Salvador. Mm -hmm. And while you were in El Salvador, is that where you got your master's degree in teaching? Yes. In in inter international teaching. International teaching. Which is really different from, I think, teaching in the States. And okay. we learned a lot about language acquisition and culture, te you know, bringing your culture into another another country. It's very different. Okay, that, that, that's really interesting. So uh, your institution, Birmingham uh, mm -hmm. State University is in Massachusetts. Right. And how did it go? How many years were you doing that, that online uh, learning? Three years. And we would do classes during the school year and then we'd go to school all summer. Okay. And with the other international teachers and Salvadoran okay. teachers, the teachers. Okay. The so, the so go ahead, go ahead. The school made a deal with you that if you finished your degree, they would refund all your tuition. Wow, that's really good. So that's... it kept you, it kept you at the school. You didn't want to leave because you wanted to stay and get your, get your money back. So okay. great way so, to keep teachers. So for the students that are watching right now and parents and colleagues and so forth and people that are going to be jumping in and out, where with Susan Dunlop, uh, she has a bachelor's of, uh, in English, a bachelor's of science in computer science, a master's degree in international teaching. Uh, Susan has tremendous amount of experience, uh, work for a foundation, development. Uh, you work as an AP teacher in El Salvador. Right now, you're working a development at a construction company, but yet you preserve your English uh, teacher inside of you. Tell us why is that fascination about college essays and why do you like that component of your job? I, I think I'm a born book editor. I wish I had been an editor in a publishing company. Okay. And I actually edit our local magazine. Um, okay. Spartanburg Magazine. I do it for free uh, because okay. I love, I love editing and making sure everything's right on the page. And I think, I think English and computer science seem like a strange combination, but I love the math of it. The grammar has to be right and spelling right and everything has to flow. And that, that reminds me a lot of computer science. So. And, and uh, right nowadays uh, with computers, you're doing you're doing both you're using your english skills computer mm -hmm. skills as well what is your job right now the full-time job also that you have what do you do i'm the director of operations so okay. i do all the hr i do all the safety training i do job site visits i make sure we're in compliance we have a lot of federal standards that we have to meet uh, but the cool thing is i know i say construction we only work on dams oh okay so to go to a dam, they're out in the country and it's by a beautiful river and many of them are a hundred years old. I go to some fascinating places. 
Okay. And then I make sure that everybody is safe. So you are the one who reads all the cover letters and, <laughs> and resumes? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. We will get, and so you are the one. I, I want to ask you this question because I work mm -hmm. in admissions and I hire a lot of people for the admissions uh, department. But how long does it take you to read a cover letter and make a decision that that resume make the cut? Well, we are looking for practical skills. Okay. So I would say once we hire someone, and I know this doesn't answer your question, but once we hire someone, then I go back with them and help them rewrite their cover letter okay. and rewrite their resume uh, so that we can present them to, I don't who provides your power where you are? Where do you get your electricity? Okay, uh, FP, FPL. Uh, okay, so if we wanted to submit a proposal to work on one of those sites, we would want to show off here are our resumes of our employees and how experienced they are. And I want to make sure that's perfect. So okay. that we look like we're first class all the way Okay. Around. Susan, uh, when you were in El Salvador, what, what sent you to El Salvador, to San Salvador? I want to hear that. And, and how did you get the AP teaching uh, uh, position? I had a friend who had hired me in Spartanburg who had then moved to El Salvador. He was a great adventurer. So I followed him to El Salvador, then I followed him to Louisiana, and then I tried to follow him to Switzerland. But um, he didn't stay long enough for me to catch up and get there. But um, years later, I got to go visit him in Turkey. Okay. And uh, help them with some development, some fundraising and PR. And that was one of the most fabulous trips I have ever taken. Okay. Um, I think this is a really good segue. I, I was born and raised in Colombia until I was 19. Uh, English definitely was not even my second or third language. I learned English when I came to the state. I did my ESL. And now that I've been in the United States for 30 years, when I go to Colombia, people say, some people say, where are you from? <laughs> when I'm here is, where are you from? <laughs> and I, I think I preserve my Spanish. I will say from one to 10, maybe it's an eight. Mm -hmm. uh, still decent. Um, my English, decent. I can read really well. I can go analysis, but it's really interesting um, for regions. Uh, every region has a particular way of writing and you pick sure. that up when you're, when you're mm -hmm. editing and where you're reading essays. Uh, what is one of the most memorable anecdotes that students from El Salvador, when they were writing their college essays, you will see a pattern, you will see a trend. Do you remember a trend? Oh, absolutely. Um, I had a list of topics that I wouldn't let them write about. And one was earthquakes. Okay. And they had all been through an earthquake and they all had the same reaction. You know, okay. I was, I was scared. And I thought it, there were interesting stories, but it didn't tell me anything about the student. Okay. Cause you and I would say the same thing. I was in an earthquake. I was scared. It doesn't give you any information about you as a student applying to a school. So yes. after, after a week, I'm like, no more earthquake essays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I, I got you. Uh, and uh, we were just a bit, right before we were on a live, we had a question. So what are the best topics to write on a college essay? Well, I, I learned by example. So I'll tell you a story. I had a student who was brilliant, just absolutely brilliant. And she turned in her first college essay and it, it was about getting a tattoo. And I thought, this doesn't tell me how smart you are and how interesting you are and how driven you are. So I, I made her set that aside and she came back and I said, let's, this seems crazy. I said, would you write me an essay about your favorite book? And that seems really boring, I know. She wrote about a book that was banned in El Salvador. She couldn't mm. get it. Wow. And somebody snuck it in the country <laughs> and I gave it to her. And she oh, read wow. and she read it. She loved it. And she wrote her essay about that experience. Okay. And she was so passionate. It was such an interesting story about you know, you and I, we want a book 
what? Amazon, click, click, we have it in two days. Yes. And she talked about wanting a book and not being able to have it. Okay. And so the thrill of finally getting a copy and reading it and what that meant to her. It, and she sent it to an Ivy League school. She had no money, okay. zero, no dollars. Okay. And she got a full ride, everything, wow. Wow. including plane tickets. Wow. And I know you would say, well, how do you know that essay made a difference? But in the fall, when school started, they chose the five best essays from that freshman class and published them on their website. And hers was one of them. Wow, incredible. So I think that essay for her made a huge difference. Did she, mention, her, your, did she mention your name on the college <laughs> essay? <laughs> no, and, I probably would have gotten sent out of Sorry, I lost you. Um, no. But I, I think an essay can sort of make the difference between maybe wait list and admissions or admissions and scholarship. You know, you have that line. And I really think an essay can take you. I don't think it can take you a D student to an Ivy League scholarship. Correct. I think it can make the difference if you're now, online. Now, can you mention the name of that book or still censored? Oh, uh, Lolita. Lolita. Okay. Ready. I will, I will find that out. And it's wicked. That, it's wicked. Okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Russian author, Nabokov. Okay. It, it's, it's a, it's a wicked book, but she was a very sophisticated, mature reader. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, she wanted to read it. And she, she understood it and she loved it. And so there's you, probably only one copy in the country. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. I, I bet Christian Safi didn't know that story. And he, <laughs> He just said the earthquake was our entire world experience back then. Uh, yeah. and, and, I, and I hear you. For me, I grew up in Colombia. I don't even want to mention the name of that person, but it was, we go with, by, by, by themes per country. And, and, and that is, uh, we were just talking about, we have colleagues and students from Venezuela. How many more essays can you write about Venezuela that the admission officers have read hundreds? Right. And how could you... Let's, let's talk about that because I tell the student, if that's what you want to write about, mm -hmm. it has to be extraordinary. Right. So if the topic now with COVID-19, even the common application, they, they open up that question up. A lot of universities are, are asking, what have you done during COVID-19? Mm -hmm. How can a student be careful to get away from saying the same being unique? What do you think, Susan? It, it has to be your passion. It has to be something, you think as a college admissions essay, you read so many essays a day mm -hmm. and you start to know when a student is not, not telling you the truth. Okay. Or, or telling you what I think you, I think you want to hear. Mm -hmm. That original voice stands out on the paper. Okay. You okay. can tell. I used to use the example with students because they were, this was back when, the internet was first coming along and they thought, oh, no one will catch me, you know, I'll copy and paste. Yes, yes. And, and I said, I know your voice. And, and they're like, no, no way you don't. I said, yeah, I know. I know the vocabulary you use. I know how you speak. And if it's not you on the paper, I can tell, just as you can tell when your mother calls you on the phone, you don't say, who is this? You yes. know that voice. Yes. No, Susan, and, and I, I will tell you a funny story myself. Uh, we have a contract when, when families, they sign up with us, they have a contract. And the contract clearly says we do not uh, do applications, write applications. We don't write college essays. We don't, do, uh, we don't do your resumes. We don't do this and that and that. So one father say, what do you do? <laughs> why am I why am I hiring you? And I say, because this is a teaching experience for your son and your daughter. So one of the things that we love seeing here is when the when the essay comes on infancy, on baby steps, and when I mean when an English faculty like you gets to see the essay and the essay evolves from first draft to draft number eight, mm -hmm. nine into a masterpiece. 
That's what we tell parents. As educators, we have the obligation to teach your son or your daughters to do the, the job right. So question for you. When we have a student right now, several students are watching. How do you strategize writing a college essay? When a student in high school should be starting writing their college essay? I think the junior year is the time to start. Okay. Because you have the time. And there's nothing wrong with writing one, two, three essays and sweeping them all aside. It feels okay. painful, but yes. often a student will send me an essay and I'll be like, okay, this middle paragraph is your essay. We're going to get rid of this, we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to take this, and we're going to turn that into your essay. Okay. So, so that that chance to write and then hit strike that goal, you find that one nugget. Or you go and you ask your friends or your parents, what's unique about me? What do you see in me? Mm -hmm. And then that can be really a really interesting start. Often you don't you don't know how others view you or what, okay. what makes you special. Okay. But once they find that topic that is sincere, the essay becomes so much easier to write. Okay. The words come because you're excited about it. It's something you're passionate about. What was, what's the strategy when you were in El Salvador and now with the students? What's the best strategy? I have a question here that came. I'm not a good writer. I'm actually a horrible writer. And how do I write an essay? Where do I begin? How, where do I get my inspiration? How do I know I'm writing the, the right essay? Susan, what do you think? Well, I think it's very frustrating for students because they don't learn this in high school. In high school, you have an essay question and here's the right answer. You know, I read the question, I studied, here's the right answer. And a college admissions essay, there is no right answer. Mm -hmm. And that's so foreign. In fact, it would usually, it would frustrate some of my really smart students. No, tell me what to write. And then I'll write it. And I'm like, no, it has to come from you. What do you think? So it takes longer because they haven't had a lot of practice, I believe. Okay. Go ahead. I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> no, so so basically, let, let's put an example. Uh, mm -hmm. There are many universities that say, uh, why the university? And it's at 250 words. What, 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 yeah, it's like one paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. And then the students, they go like, what am I going to talk about of why the university? What is your advice on that one, on that why answer question? Well, the, the first thing not to do is tell the university about the university. You know, okay. you still want to go to the website and go, oh, it's this paragraph, I'll hand it to you. And that's not what they're looking for. It's, it has to be, why do you feel that you should attend this school? So it, okay. it has to be personal. And I think sometimes at 17, 18, you don't feel like you're interesting. You know, what do I have to say? Mm -hmm. But it, it's truly what they want to know. And the application has, you know, your resume and your transcript and your recommendation letters. So use those questions to tell the school things that you can't fit in the lines on the application. Correct, correct. Now, um, when you're doing, when a student is doing a brainstorm for topics, do you recommend writing them down, start going freelancing? I mean, the main common application asks you for 650 words. Uh, students and everyone, I won't say just students, they tend to procrastinate and they, they tend to say, oh, I will do that later, I will do that later. The good news, and we were talking this yesterday with, with the whole team, are rising seniors, you know, formerly juniors, they are writing their college essays right now. And actually, we feel for the first time in our history at JCT for Education, our students are ahead of the, ahead of the curve on writing those essays. So, so you just mentioned five drafts of different essays and so forth. How the student can pick which one is the best essay out of those five that they wrote? Well, I'm hoping I get a vote. Okay. <laughs> Or, or your parents, um, or your friends. 
imagine writing an essay and you don't want anyone to read it. Mm -hmm. then, then you don't have a good essay. You don't have the right essay. But if you have an essay and you're like, I want to take this down to dinner. I want to read this to my parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're getting somewhere because that's something you're proud of and something that is the real you. You know, you talked about bad writers or people who mm -hmm. think they are bad writers. And often I've had a student, you know, submit an essay and I can tell that they, they've dictated it. They've yes. just talked. That's okay. That gives us a place to start. I, I, I have no problem with that. And then I can look at the essay and go, okay, hey, we've got to cut this part out, but we're going to expand this. And oftentimes they'll throw out a term or something that they assume that everyone knows. I'm like, I don't know what you mean there. Can you explain that? And, it, and, and then we start to build. And I make sure that, that, that it's in the right order. Okay. So it, it flows and it makes sense. But there's, there's nothing wrong with being a bad writer. Okay. That we, we can work with a bad writer. That's okay. okay. But when you think I'm such a bad writer that I'll have my brother write the essay, it shows. Yes. Um, the college might be able to see your SAT or ACT essay. They might have other examples of your writing. Mm -hmm. So if they're not consistent, they're not going to trust that student. So thank you. And, and thank you for saying that. Um, I, I'm personally, I have dyslexia mm -hmm. and I can speak. Hopefully I can communicate when it comes to writing. Dyslexia comes in, it kicks in and I have work. I have techniques. Actually, I was diagnosed my third year in college. Don't know how to, I survived in high school. Wow. I, was, I was a good high school student. My last three years were phenomenal, mm -hmm. but uh, for a student that will take him or her an hour, it will take me three hours yeah. and, um, and so forth. But I, I teach the students like just what you just said, and it's so important, audio. I love WhatsApp audios. I send tons of audios. That's how I, I, I support my, my, my communication skills with people. WhatsApp audios is the best. So I tell students, use the audio function. And then when you get, and even, you are at the beach or you are at your grandma's or whatever, just if you, the college essay question answer comes, record your voice, then just go back to your house and retype that essay that you just, that you just mentioned. So I want to say thank you for, that, for saying that because that's, students are telling me, oh man, I, thank you for saying that because now I, I love dictating as you say, and then I, I, I put the commas and so forth. So that's an excellent technique for students that struggle with the writing component. Susan, you have two children. Now they are, both of them, they had the opportunity to go to college. Uh, your daughter went to Zwani, and now she's at Middlebury doing her master's degree. Hopefully she will get for her PhD in Spanish, uh, Yale University. And then your son went to University of Louisiana and he's a computer geek and, did you did you coach them through the college process in terms of the, the essays? Definitely with my daughter because Swanee was out of our reach financially. Okay. So we applied for all sorts of different scholarships and never stopped. That's a good tip for college. There are scholarships you can get your sophomore, junior, and senior years. Then there's not as much competition as there is for scholarships freshman year. So we kept okay. sort of building this package to pay. And I will say the thing I was proudest of of both my children was that they graduated with no debt. That's very good. That's now, really. That's and, good. <laughs> and so, so here you are, you're an AP English teacher. You, you're, you're a writer, you're, you're a trained, your English is amazing. I sometimes get parents calling and they say, I disagree on this college essay. Oh. And and I'm like, <laughs> I pause mm -hmm. and I like, you disagree. And then I go, this is your son or your daughter's voice. So how, what, I, I, I always tell the students, this is their voice, they're on their process. And of course it's educational. And we, we tell the parents, listen, you're not the one going to college. Mm -hmm. It's your son or your daughter. And if your son or your daughter 
they they are adamant about this college essay. I think you need to respect those words. Of course, they 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 say uh, this this is maybe out of line, disproportional. Mm -hmm. What message as a parent who support your daughter, your daughter with their college essay uh, writing and ideas? What message do you have for parents? The essay is one piece of a big puzzle. It's, it's just a piece. And I think parents tend to focus on that essay as this is the make or break moment for everything. And that's not true. But, and I've seen this where a student's written an essay and you can tell that the parent has gone back and put in, it's like big vocabulary words. Yes. They're not the words of the student. No. And no. it is so obvious. Mm -hmm. And I know as a parent, they think they're helping. Oh, I'm going to increase your vocabulary and that's going to impress this school and you're going to get in. But if, you, did you have a good vocabulary score on your SAT? No. So no. all of a sudden these words just, they don't fit. Yes. And so yes. as much as a parent wants to help, honestly, you can make it worse. You know, and as educators, I, I'm, I'm so happy you mentioned that. And thank you for, for sending that message to the parents because that that's not helpful. When I, I work in admissions 16 and a half years, and I tell you, I read thousands of essays, mm -hmm. and I will learn right away when an essay had, you know, you, you, you put one on one together. I even call high school counselors and say, did she write this essay? <laughs> and, and, and they go like, ooh. And I, I, yeah, I, I don't get it. Oh, sometimes they say, yes, she wrote the essay or he wrote the essay and so forth. We do so much intel in, in, in colleges and universities. We just, it's, it's crazy. Um, and, I, and, I, and I tell the students, you know what? Ethics start right here. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you write a really <laughs> a horrible essay than have somebody write that essay for you because you're cheating yourself. And you have to be honest. And this is on the common application. It says that you write this essay yourself. And, and that's something that we, we as an educator, I, I tell the students, you have to obey by, by ethics, like honor, uh, honor code. So I, I tell the parents, don't worry. And now I, I, have, I have essays that I have one student wrote an essay about Willy Wonka. And <laughs> oh, how, I read that. <laughs> that essay was amazing. And how she thought her father is... Um, it was an analogy of Willy Wonka and the father, but how that Willy Wonka, her father, taught her how to be the daughter she is right now. And I remember the mom called me and said, Willy Wonka, I said, will get my daughter into college? Yes. And I said, yes. Yeah. And he got her into it. And, uh, and, and it, it is great. That, that type of feedback from parents is welcome. I read an essay, and I want you to tell me also a story about what went wrong with mm -hmm. college essays. But another essay was a, a guy who wanted to study math, but he's a piano player. So he mixed math and piano with his personality. One of the most beautiful essays that I read in my life. So let's go to the other side of the coin. Uh, with, we have winning essays. Have you, you have stories that went south with college essays? Yes. <laughs> okay. I had a student write a story about stealing a car Oof. and I thought you and and he said I said you can't turn this in he said but it's true I said but this is not the time to you know admit a felony you know we're not going to confess to anything I don't care if it's true um often I would get the when I broke up with my boyfriend when I broke up with my girlfriend essay and I think they felt better putting that down on paper. I said, mm -hmm. okay, we feel better now. Set that aside. Okay. That was like a diary entry. That wasn't an essay. One of the most memorable essays, awful essays I read, was a young man. He was traveling with his family. They were in Miami. His brother had on sandals. And his toe got stuck in an escalator. Oof. And he lost the toe. Oof. So, I mean, it was a graphic, gripping, interesting essay. But I said, you can't send it. It doesn't tell me anything about 
you. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there when my brother lost his toe. <laughs> that doesn't help. It was yes. interesting, but yes. we got to set that aside. Good. And they would always say, but it's true, it's true. And I'm like, but that, that doesn't mean we're going to send it. Okay, so, so let's recap. Uh, in terms of a strategy, uh, come out with ideas, write, write the ideas, uh, write the topics, and, and, and go freelancing and write, write those ideas uh, where you use a computer, your iPhone, whatever device you use, get those strategies together. Don't wait two weeks prior the application is due because it's gonna be crazy and you're not gonna have a, a good time. Mm -hmm. Don't use fancy vocabulary if you don't use it. And you know what, when, when the students, they send their first drafts and I, even, I, might, I might call colleagues and say, is that his word? Seriously? Because I sometimes question those and, they, and the student will say, yes, I use that word. And I'm like, okay, how do you use it? And, and then I clear that, that, that fact, I say, mm -hmm. okay, this is good. So don't use fancy vocabulary. When the common application says 650 words, between 250 and 650, mm -hmm. what's the right amount of words that you should put on that, into that college essay? Well, first of all, you have to be very careful because you could upload an essay and it would cut it off at the, word, at the 650th word and you don't know it. So you could send in an incomplete essay. So you want to check your words before. Sometimes it's number of characters. It's not always the same. Yes. But because you're doing online, you want to make sure you followed the instructions. And you, you want that. You want an introduction. You want a body. And then you, you need some sort of conclusion. But you don't have to have a life lesson. And it doesn't have to have a happy ending. Okay. And please, please, please don't end with a cliche, like, you know, life is short, or <laughs> everything happens for a reason. Um, one of my best tips, I believe, is the use of pronouns. And when you write an essay, avoid the word you. And make sure you're using I and me and mine. Okay. Because I am speaking for myself. And I'm telling you what I think and I feel and I did. But when you say the word you, it starts to sound like a lecture or yes. a sermon. And you're a teenager. And the person who's reading this is an adult. So it's not your job to teach the reader anything. It's, but if you stick with first person, then, then you're safe. Just watch out for the word you. It can get very preachy very quickly uh, I have uh, once a year I might have a student that wants to write a college essay in a form of poetry what's your take on those essays <laughs> I have a confession I didn't even like teaching poetry in class <laughs> isn't that awful um, and we started um, April was poetry month and I would teach um, protest songs from the 60s. We'd study Bob Dylan. And that was fun. I got that. And and the students who liked music were far more interested in that. You just, when somebody hands me a poem, I'm like, what if I don't get it? Yes. And I don't have that worry reading an essay. Okay. You don't, you know, you hear about people when they apply for a job. Oh, I put my resume in a pizza box and, you know, they opened it and I got the job. You, you don't need these tricks. You're good enough. You're young and you're fresh and you're interesting and you're exciting. And when you find the right school, they're going to be lucky to have you. So you have to go into it with, with that attitude instead of, oh my God, if I don't get this right, this is the end of everything. Yes, and especially if a student is looking for a scholarship mm -hmm. and so forth, I will say to the student there, places on the common application where you can house that poem and by just focus on, on that question, on those 10 questions or eight questions on the common application. Susan, by the way, Francis Escalante says saludos desde El Salvador. So you, you, you have, Susan, what, what to avoid when writing a college essay? I mean, you mentioned 
several things. What else to avoid when writing a college essay? This is another one of my favorites. Quotes. Okay. So often a student, again, thinks my words aren't good enough, so I will quote Abraham Lincoln or Martin Luther King or Frederick Douglass. But the essay is supposed to teach the college what you think, how you feel, what's going on in your mind. And a quote is so distant and generic. It's just, it's going to take you down the wrong path. It's like saying, I don't want you to see me. Don't look at me. So I'm going to give you Abraham Lincoln. You, your voice is unique. And, and I, I want to hear that. So yes, that's a hard one. They love quotes. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, when, when, the, when the essays, they go through so many drafts and proofreading, I always tell, and I wrote it down, I say I tell the students and I will take my hat off and I say, listen, I want this essay that I can bite my nails like this, that I, if, if I tear up, it's because it's incredible. And I want, let's go on and, and, and just give examples of good essays because I have essays on my head that are my favorites. Can you remember some essays that are your favorites? I remember now this young man was brilliant and he's at Harvard now getting his PhD. He was also a reader, and he wrote his essay about the stack of books beside his bed mm -hmm. that he wanted to read. And of course, he hadn't gotten to them. And the stack got taller and taller, and it started to lean. <laughs> and it was such an image. The way he described it, the colors of the books, and how they stacked up, and how high they got. I'll never forget that. I know that seems so simple, but yes. it was now. If he hadn't been a reader and he had tried to convince me of that, I don't think it would have been as important. And um, he didn't also didn't have a lot of money, was really struggling. And you could tell that books were an escape for him. And, and he truly loved to read. No. I love that essay. And what, what I'm trying to do here with this ping pong of favorite essays is to send messages to the students of ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I had an essay that I read uh, from a young lady, and it was Minute of Life. Mm -hmm. Just that, I'm like, Minute of Life? What is Minute of Life? Well, she was in a horrible draft. Um, she was doing uh, going down a river in one of, you know, water drafting, and they, they drained in one of those, uh, what's it called? Uh, you guys have that a lot in South Carolina and North Carolina. Uh, one of the rivers, the, mm -hmm. the raft, they flipped, and they yeah. start going like that, and none of the people could go up. None of them. Oh. They were stuck in a little internal tornado, and she was actually fighting for her life. Mm -hmm. She focused more. She she survived, but she focused more not on the rescue operation, mm -hmm. but on that minute of life. Mm -hmm. What she thought for one minute will happen, and I even cried with that essay wow. because memories of her of her first communion came mm -hmm. uh her mom her father her sister mm -hmm. family and relatives and all of a sudden she sees a light and she just go up mm -hmm. she found a strength and she goes up her whole essay was about one minute of life mm -hmm. i'm like oh my gosh this essay is absolutely beautiful she's at an amazing institution right now you have another essay like that or something or something that is an idea. I w I was thinking not um, not not a not a life or death essay. Um, oh Lord, I'm now thinking about an essay my my daughter wrote, where she was working, and I don't know if this was a good essay. I enjoyed it though. She was working in a warehouse, and the uh, smoke alarm was beeping. The battery was dying, and she. <laughs> She talked about how everyone had gotten used to it and it didn't bother them anymore and how she had to find it and fix it. And it was such a, it would, I, I think it said a lot about her personality. Uh -huh. I mean, not an amazing essay, but the way she used the sound. And I love essays that have sounds and yes. colors, yes. Yes. Uh, temperatures, anything that takes me, you know, paint yes. that picture for me so I can see it. And yes. that, 
that irritating. You know a smoke alarm, how it how irritating it is when it beeps and the beep 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 ran all the way through the essay. It it, it was uh it was memorable. It was memorable. I, I, I'm, I'm so happy you mentioned the fact of colors. And I tell the students, think that you're that you're reading your own essay. Is it is it entertaining? Is it powerful? Is it good? And and I always tell, let's put more colors to your essay. Let's put more life to your essay. It doesn't matter what topic it is, but make sure that the reader in that admissions office is not asking the question, so what happened to this end of losing end? And I will tell you, working in an admission office, we also picked our favorite essays and we will circulate that essay to our colleagues and say, you guys must read this mm -hmm. essay. Mm -hmm. And then your colleagues will say, so what's the verdict? The student will get in or not? <laughs> so that, that happens real life in office of admissions where the student essays are moving around because they're very powerful. Susan, I'm very conscious about your time, Instagram time, and they will <laughs> cut our power here in a few minutes. So uh, any, any words of wisdom for the students that are right now dipping into the college essay world? I'm, I'm looking at my notes. Um, I got very excited and wrote down all the things I love. Thank you. I mean, if we're missing something, please go ahead. I think for so many uh, students for, with JCT, English is not their first language. Correct. And I would say, try to think in English while you write. Okay. It, it, is, it is obvious to an English teacher if you are thinking in another language and translating, if that makes yes. sense. There, yes. there are words that are different. Um, my daughter was working at a church and they had translated the gospel into Spanish for a special Sunday. Well, they yes. put it in, they put it in Google Translate, Oof. and nobody checked it. Ugh. And so uh, Jesus was blessed by the holy alcohol instead of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, spirit alcohol. You can see how that happened, and nobody knew. So you <laughs> you have to think in the language that you're writing in, and if you're struggling, I suggest you pick up your favorite book. Hopefully you have a favorite book. Um, it might be The Great Gatsby, maybe. The Great Gatsby has a lot of color in it. And uh, he's, he's very, um, has, a, has a distinct style. But I find that if I read a great piece of literature and then start to write right after that, it, I don't know, it, it inspires me. I hear that voice and, and I can almost imitate it. It makes me, I don't know, it makes me a little bit better writer. Okay. But I love when, and remember, you're supposed to sound like you're 17 or 18. You don't want me to write your essay. You're going to sound like a middle-aged white woman. That's not who's applying to school. You want to sound young. And I love sometimes when people create expressions or they say something. It, it's just a little bit different, and it's exciting to see it on the page. So, again, there's no right. There's no right answer. You're okay. not going to get a hundred. It's okay. not. It's not graded. But make sure your commas are in the right place. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And absolutely. No it's everything you you want to make it right, but it doesn't have to be right. That makes sense. Susan, you've been around. Uh, you travel around. You've been in El Salvador. You were a teacher. Now you're back in the states. What's the future of education? Oh, I think so much of it is going online. And it, I, that was such a sudden transfer uh, for schools in this country this year. I think you're going to see a lot more of it. My daughter's finishing her master's at Middlebury all online. Okay. But I told her if she wants to be a better teacher, you know, be a good student too and see how things are transitioning. It's, a, it's scary, but it's exciting. To, I mean, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? Yes. You can't say life is dull right now. So yes. hopefully that will translate into education in different ways to learn and experience. I Correct. Hope. Correct. And uh, any, any anecdotes during this uh, quarantine time? Something, did, how, <laughs> did you learn something, a new skill before that never done? I, I help care for my 92-year-old mother. 
Okay. But she's very sharp. And she had a doctor's appointment, and we had to do it telehealth. Yes. Her very first telehealth. So the office calls, you know, Mrs. Willis, we need to make an appointment. And she said, I am not going to do a telehealth until I get my hair done. <laughs> because her beauty shop was closed. Yes. So, you know what the doctor said? Okay. <laughs> so we had to wait till the beauty shop opened and she could get her hair done. And then she did the telehealth. Oh, that's, that's cute. It's a different world. It's a that's different cute. world. Yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned uh, technology, distance mm -hmm. learning. Yesterday, our guest, Dr. Bob Reza, said the same thing, distance learning, career evaluations again, distance learning. We, we, we are seeing a very rapid change uh, in education. I see a big movement uh, in distance learning, so, but I, I don't see the students will get away with writing college essays. No. The college essays will be part of the educational system, at least here in the United States, in Canada, uh, around the world, more and more universities, they want to know your story. Mm -hmm. So before it was for a lot of countries, it's just a national test, but that's changing. That is changing. People want to hear your own story. So Susan, thank you so much for your time. Wonderful. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations to Christian too, again. I'm so Cong proud. Congratulations to Christian Safi yes. and to all of you watching. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, actually, I stopped and I was asking people for questions. So yeah. many people just joining on this live. So thank you again for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Be safe. Hasta, be safe too. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Bye-bye. Adios. Bye. Adios.